A few weeks back, I did a video addressing how the economy would affect giving at year end and what to do about it. That video was very well received. As we begin 2023, I'm using this video to share the findings of a report released recently by the Barner Group addressing the state of generosity in the U.S. and where they believe giving is headed in the coming year. To those findings, I've added my recommendations as to how you can use the information to your advantage. I believe you'll find this video to be very helpful. Let's get to them. The highly respected Barna Group research and data analysis experts just released its annual State of Generosity report, and I believe its results will be important to you as a nonprofit leader. I love reviewing this report each year because hearing what motivates donors like mine helps me be better in development. I've found that having a good understanding of the needs of the donors who give to our organization and what motivates them to give to be invaluable. Determining their beliefs and strongly held convictions and how those intersect with the mission, vision, and values of our organization has allowed me to best meet their needs and mine. I have one couple who has supported our ministry for over 38 years. This couple cares about us personally and staying connected is important to them, but it's also their way of feeling like they're making a difference through the work we do. The first time we met them, the man said, I have two requests before we give our first gift. I want the name of your immediate supervisor and I want your permission to write him to find out if you're doing good work. I honored that request and he wrote my supervisor. Well, apparently the couple was satisfied because they started giving and have never stopped. I've continued to send them reports because that's what they want and need. Understanding the wants and needs of a partner is vital to growing a relationship. This current state of generosity report by the Barnard Group gives us a tremendous glimpse into the heart of the donor. The report is quite lengthy and it can be found on Barna.com, but I've summarized the key findings and have them for you now. Key finding number one, givers want to make a lasting impact. In the donors that Barna Group survey, they found that givers are significantly more likely to prioritize making a lasting difference in the world. Nearly half, 46% of those surveyed, said making a lasting difference is a top priority compared with only one-third of non-givers at 33%. The same percentage, 46% of givers, also indicate they care about helping people with severe needs on a regular basis. Barna reports about two in five givers place a high importance on being influential and being informed. 38% hope to influence the lives of people outside their family, and 36% prioritize being well-informed about current events. This heightened awareness and heightened ambition might continue to fuel their generosity, keeping them attuned to areas of need and opportunities to act and lead. When asked to define true generosity, respondents use terms like selfless, compassionate, impactful for the receiver and the giver, and a response to Christ's love. Those surveyed who identified as practicing Christians see generosity as a reflection of God's character. High capacity givers surveyed had an even stronger belief that generosity is a reflection of God's character. The same group of givers revealed a, re a belief that giving is good because giving is elemental to God's very nature in the story of Christian faith. By participating in generosity, people can tap into the meaning and joy of redemptive transformational work. Interestingly, Barna found that U.S. adults making at least 300,000 are especially driven by religious motivations, such as reflecting God's character, giving back to God, or becoming like Christ through their giving. 
my recommendation is find a way to position your organization as one that is making a difference in our world. For Christian givers, market the impact they can make on eternity. If you're seeing people one to Christ, having a saving knowledge of the sacrifice Jesus made for his children will be even better. As mentioned in prior videos, providing output, that's facts and figures, is important, but equally, if not more important, is providing outcomes. That's lives that were changed for the better because of your organization. Make sure you can explain how the giving of the partner or donor made a lasting difference in the lives of one or more individuals will have a greater impact. Many believe that making the donor the hero in the story helps them understand the role they play in the success of a program, project, or change life, but also how their giving made a difference. Key finding number two. People with high capacity are very charitable. Individuals with high capacity give not only their money, but of their time and talents. Barna Research found that among high capacity givers surveyed, nearly all, 96%, donate charitably. Of that group, the average annual charitable donation totaled 41280 per household. High capacity givers not only give their resources, the majority, 70%, are involved with volunteering their time as well. With other donors surveyed, practicing Christians tended to be the best givers with total household giving of $3,000. Roughly $600 of that is given to Christian organizations. In addition, 53% of practicing Christians say prayer influences their giving decision. My recommendation? Often in the past, I've talked about focusing on the critical few, those 20% who give 80% of your income. Barner Research seems to validate that those larger donors are more likely to give of their time, talent, and treasure. But it also validates that if you only have limited time, which describes most busy nonprofit leaders, that spending time with those who have the capacity to give and willingness to give is your best investment. Also, since practicing Christians seem to be some of the most generous givers, it would seem to give an advantage to Christian organization, Christian causes. But don't be discouraged if you are an organization of another faith, as most studies show that giving is still stronger from individuals of faith than those individuals who don't identify with any faith at all. Key finding number three, the U.S. is still a generous nation. In looking at giving by generations, Barna found that at least half give. 51% of Generation Z give. 63% of Generation X, Millennials, and Baby Boomers give. 73% of the greatest generation give. The greatest generation gives three times more than Boomers and four times more than Millennials. Barna also found that 62% of givers somewhat agree with the statement, I'm always thinking about how I can give back. 35% strongly agree. When high capacity givers talk about their priorities, using my resources to be generous ranks as their second most important priority at 44%. Barna found that 80% of practicing Christians find generosity to be very important to extremely important. Barna's research also revealed that high capacity givers who are Christian are especially driven by some of these activities. More than half point to spiritual convictions and discipline as factors in their giving. My recommendation, if you've been in nonprofit work for a decade or more, you've most likely seen the generosity of the American people, especially practicing Christians. Even in downturns in the economy or during a pandemic, people will still come through and give. It was initially thought that the pandemic would have a devastating impact on nonprofit organizations and giving in general. However, a significant majority of nonprofit organizations grew in the pandemic and some grew tremendously. People saw others in need and stepped up to give their own stimulus checks and any extra to help those less fortunate, some doing so at great sacrifice to themselves. 
If you have been hit hard by the current economic downturn, my advice is to do your best to survive, weather the storm, because our economy will come out of it and our donors will be back giving stronger than ever when they come out. Remember, we're about to experience the largest generational wealth transfer in human history, the transfer from the boomers to the next generations. And if you act properly by building relationships with the next generation, you will not only survive, but thrive. Asset giving is the best kept secret in the nonprofit world and giving of business interests, real estate and other assets will propel that giving and the nonprofit that knows how to ask for that will come out ahead. For information on asset giving, watch this video and learn how you can get those kinds of gifts. It's very important to continue your learning process and especially to gain a better understanding of your donors' wants and desires. For there to be a partnership with donors, there needs to be an intersection between their needs and your mission. Finding that intersection comes from asking questions and listening to donors, but it also comes from the results of surveys and findings like this. I hope this recent state of generosity gave you some good data to make informed decisions regarding who to ask, how to ask, and even how often to ask. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below listing which concepts you like best or wanted to work on first. If you've never subscribed to this channel, please know there's no cost to you, but the more subscribers we have, the more this message gets out to others and the more we can all share in the wealth derived from our collective experiences. Simply hit the subscribe button below and click the all button to be notified of the next video release. Consider sharing this with a friend or colleague. If you want to find out what to do and say during a meeting with a donor, watch this video and raise more money than ever before and better our world. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded this year. Thank you.